Aloha and welcome to Cooper Union, what's happening with human rights around the world on Think Tech Live, broadcasting from our downtown studio in Honolulu, Hawaii, in Moana Nui Akea. I'm your host, Joshua Cooper, and the title of today's special episode is a special on war and global warming, the Ukraine conflict and the climate crisis, punish Putin profoundly by going green. Joining me today is Svetlana Romanko, an amazing environmental lawyer and strategist. And Svetlana, thank you so much for joining us. And we know we're approaching the two month commemoration of the conflict. How are you holding up as most of the rest of the world is looking towards Earth Day? Yes, thank you so much, Joshua, for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be with you today and discuss such relevant issues. And uh, yes, uh, indeed, it's uh, almost uh, it's uh, 37, uh, 57th days a day of the war in Ukraine, and it's absolutely clear that um, this uh, war aggression under the direction of Vladimir Putin was uh, just uh, is uh, still is a clear war against Ukraine's sovereignty and independence, as well as a grave violation of human rights, international law, and global peace. And first of all, this invasion confronts Europe with its darkest hours of the 21st century and confronts the whole overall world with a grimmer future. As our famous IPCC scientist from Ukraine, Svetlana Krakowska, said that the fossil fuels and climate crisis and war in Ukraine have the same roots, and these roots are fossil fuels. And um, actually, uh, what... Uh, we, uh, and the reg regime of Vladimir Putin is a clear and sole aggressor in this illegal war and bears full responsibility for the atrocities committed by its war machine. And uh, saying so, uh, we just uh, uh, understand that this war machine has been funded, fed, and fueled by the coal, oil, and gas industries that are driving both the invasions that threatens Ukraine and the climate crisis that threatens human humanity its future. So uh, to, to end this, we've launched a global call stand with Ukraine, uh, which is um, which is, has been highly supported all over the world by 760 organizations from 60 countries, over 60 countries from Angola and to Pacific, uh, Pacific countries as well. And all these countries are demanding to drain Putin's, uh, Putin's war chest and um, uh, imposing em embargo on Russia's fossil fuels uh, all over the world, as especially uh, we demand this from the European countries because the European Union is a major importer of Russian oil and gas. And since the war started, they sent 35 billion of euros in payments for Russia's oil and gas. So it's definitely clear that uh, Russia is the third global emitter of, uh, of greenhouse gases. And it, it, it was not going to reduce emissions anytime soon because uh, Russia has a huge resources of oil, gas, and coal. And that happens is uh, that these fossil fuels are fueled the war against Ukraine because they let Putin to build its military build up for, for the years, selling gas and oil to Europe. So uh, what we did with the Stand with Ukraine campaign, we called upon the governments uh, in, within the European Union and outside of the European Union to reject and ban any import of fossil fuels from Russia and rapidly phase out fossil fuels. And also we called to stop all trade and end investment is gas, in Gazprom, Rosneft, Transneft, and any other companies from Russia, freeze the assets of such companies outside Russia, as well as freezing other Russian fossil fuel assets. And Western companies, we call them, have to stop fossil fuel production in Russia as well. So our uh, idea, which was really, uh, which was really just, si just simple and obvious was to dry out Putin's uh, income streams as soon as possible, and in, uh, which includes tackling direct and indirect investments into fossil fuel infrastructure in Russia. Uh, but that's uh, just ending with that, that it's an imperative that the world not simply replace Russian produced fossil fuels, in particular fossil gas, with fossil fuels from other countries, in particular liquefied natural gas. Because as we know, 
from the modern history uh, that fossil fuels have financed many conflicts around the world in different parts of the world. Of course, in uh, Argentina, of course, in Africa, in uh, Asia, and in many, many other countries. And we would like to avoid this harmful uh, destruction uh, uh, in any other conflict areas and, and the war in Ukraine at the same time, because our country uh, was a severely damaged and destroyed and uh, there are cities that 90 percent destroyed and we just call on global community to help ukraine to help ukraine in uh, the way we all can uh just to ask our deputies and governments to embargo fossil fuels from russia and not to replace them with other fossil fuels and to and all old and new investments into russia's fossil fuels as well Thank you so much. And you really did connect, even though the conflict is there in Ukraine and we know how much you're going through, how it really is the energy system is global and how fossil fuels are toxic. And as long as people are addicted, more people around the world will face exploitation and have to fight for their rights the same way that the Ukrainians are now. We also know, as you pointed out, 60% of Putin's economy is entirely oil and gas. That's what Russia is doing, pumping oil and gas. So. Putin now use it as a threat to turn off the spigot to Europe. But on the other hand, we could actually reverse that by showing the power of the people to actually go renewable and then actually embark on a new direction for all of humanity. Yes, um, that, that's true. We uh, can do that. And uh, actually saying so, saying so um, I, I would like also to acknowledge that governments are still ignoring the science and keep expanding the problem for a moment. I mean, the fossil fuel exploration, because uh, they're just public and private finance still flow to fossil fuels and they are still greater than those for climate adaptation and mitigation and even in the european union uh they paid uh to for russia's fossil fuels three times much more money that they co just collected and funded uh for uh, to to uh, for humanitarian aids for you Ukraine being in the midst of war. So this is not fair and this is not what we call justice. And governments must work together to make the transition equitable and avoid stranded um, assets because uh, the combined value of the stranded assets has been estimated at one to four trillion dollars and a global treaty yeah, and I will name a fossil fuel uh, non-proliferation treaty is required to manage this risk and allow the transition to happen at the sc scale that required to tackle climate crisis. And fossil fuel non-proliferation treaty, yeah, it's a global framework, uh, which uh, actually are uh, important for me to recognize now as uh, being historically, a historically important framework to stop proliferation of the weapon of mass destruction. Uh, it's from the past about nuclear weapons, but as we see from now that fossil fuels have be already become a weapon of mass destruction, destroying Ukrainian economy right now. But what, what's more important and much more poignant, destroying in Ukrainian cities and uh, killing, uh, killing thousands of civilians, uh, creating and bringing incredible violence uh, and the dreadful violence to the land. So, it's definitely it definitely has to stop and uh, mm, actually uh, world has enough renewable energy potential in every region not to continue with a uh, fossil fuel and climate hostile wars and we can meet our energy needs with existing technologies what we are calling to the consumers uh, to citizens in different countries. Just please help us, help us to impose embargo by consuming less energy. Because the less energy you consume, just uh, slightly decrease your heating at the house or your air conditioning. Same, the less energy you consume, the more energy you use from renewable energy sources. It helps and the war in Ukraine because as easily government will impose embargo and say no to fossil fuels and they can easily, more easily phase out fossil fuels so both ends are very important and actually it's also important how we replace the gas heating with heat pumps that can be largely imported from the us and how can we uh make our home home uh, insulated better uh, for energy efficiency and yeah for all all of these directions no it's really amazing that you're connecting all the dots but also empowering everyone to be able to take action 
just by shifting to renewable energy. The war in Ukraine is truly connected to global warming and everyone around the earth can protect the planet and more important, save lives by going green. Looking at the statistics, the world uses 100 million barrels of oil every day. So to save our world, fossil fuel consumption must decrease drastically. And we really appreciate you bringing up the Fossil Free Non-Proliferation Treaty. And so Ukraine activists are sharing strategies for a sustainable future for all so the world isn't held hostage by totalitarian regimes and multinational corporations. And it was great that you mentioned the Fossil Free Non-Proliferation Treaty. We actually have been able to pass that in the state of Hawaii from the Senate to the House. And today at 1.30 will be a hearing in the House, the final hearing, and then hopefully it will then go back to the Senate and will become the first state in the US to actually mm -hmm. take action as a subnational entity. And we know looking at the Paris Agreement, that was the one puka or hole as we say in Hawaii, that we're not doing enough on fossil fuel and there was compromises even in Glasgow so we appreciate you giving us that holistic perspective when most people would just be worried about the bombs falling ahead. So thank you so much, Lana, for sharing some of that with us. Thank you so much, Joshua. One thing as well that we're looking at was just the way the world is going. And I think you mentioned something earlier when you said it's not just going to Russia, but the sad part is if we focus on Russia and fossil fuels and we just go to the next country since Saudi Arabia, we're only perpetuating the problem and empowering these dictators. So, I mean, Saudi Arabia is beheading people and using bone saws to murder journalists like Khashoggi. What are some of the steps we could take to then become more clean and green, which also then to me will be healthier and have a better resilient and renewable energy system for our planet's future? Yeah, no, absolutely. And actually, the fossil fuel industry and its allies are exploiting the war in Ukraine uh, to push for more oil and gas development, fracking L and LNG export, as exactly Saudi Arabia, Arabia is doing. And of course, uh, just uh, mm, using more oil and gas and buying oil and gas from the dictators, like we see, like Putin will of course, prop, prop up those dictators, and it will always be a threat of human rights abuse and these horrific wars across the planet. So that's why that's extremely important that we end this war and we win over Putin's aggression and invasion, and we stop all financial flows to Russian fossil fuel industry. That's how we in enable a big geopolitical shift because uh, uh, Russia is the second largest uh, importer of uh, uh, oil and the third largest importer of gas to many other countries. And I would like to point out as well that some countries, as for example, India, some countries as China and partially Japan are still also buying uh, oil from Russia. And we work towards those countries and civil societies there just to make a call of them uh, as well ban uh, Russian fossil fuels and look into the uh, renewable energy transition. As exactly as the uh, fossil fuel non-proliferation treaty says, because it consists of three main pillars, and the first one is ending existing exploration. With no ending exploration, with adding to the exploration, for example, with building new gas infrastructure or new terminals, we just grow the problem, we just add to the problem, because and we won't be able to help the current uh, to end the current war and to end the current uh, help the current crisis it will only deepen global dependence on fossil fuels and further empowering russia and other dictators and damaging the climate and um, it's uh, very important that we end all new explorations and phase out fossil fuels as exactly Quebec did as the first city. Uh, it's ended all exploration a couple of days ago, again, in line with the Fossil Fuel Non-Proliferation Treaty. And uh, it will uh, just... Uh, it, it will make sense to every state and er actually every city and country to join the treaty and uh, agree to global non fossil fuel non-proliferation. And uh, in early June, there will be Stockholm Plus 50, very important UN conference, which back 50, 50 years ago have started uh, uh, the first environmental conference, uh, focused conference all over the world. So it's very important that we bring fossil fuel non-proliferation treaty into that UN conference and will demand a concrete action from the governments of uh, fossil fuel uh, non-proliferation. 
you know, bringing up Stockholm is absolutely important. And it also reinforces the importance of the UN Sustainable Development Goals, specifically SDG number seven on clean and renewable energy and pursuing renewable energy sources and punishing food profoundly. This is the most powerful way possible to stand in solidarity with the people of Ukraine. Yeah, and yeah. we are calling uh, from Ukraine, we are calling for solidarity and we are calling for a green recovery of the crisis for the plan, uh, exactly as a, a green Marshall plan that will help us to rebuild, uh, to rebuild our uh, infrastructure, to rebuild our country uh, towards the green renewable energy transition, not based on fossil fuels, but uh, not, not going back to the part of the history, but just growing on the green energy transition. Yes, and uh, one of your my favorite quotes you said during the Just Look Up Alliance moving was fossil fuels are the bulwarks of autocracy and the death of the natural world. When we look at that going forward, people around the world are taking action for a peaceful and green future, and Ukraine is definitely leading the way with such courage and creativity. What more can we do to live in peace together with renewable energy and rights for all? Uh, just first of all, uh, what we can do, uh, it's uh, we uh, could, for instance, produce air source heat pumps by the millions and ship them to Europe that US definitely can do. So by next winter, they could be installed in homes and put in a noticeable dent in Putin's oil and gas leverage. It would be just a specific federal land lease program for the US, but for a new day. We could quickly build out the network of electric buses, bikes, and cars that would depress demand worldwide for Putin's fossil fuels and that of other oil autocrats and bullies from the Saudi royal family to the Koch network. Uh, and uh, what if we stop? believing that history determines today's reality, that the future has to look like the past. We as Ukrainians are remaking our history in these tragic but remarkable days with uh, the shockingly brave resistance to a war machine funded by oil and gas. And of course, uh, those who fund this fossil fuel industry, for example, as a big banks, as a big financial, financials and financial institutions all over the world, they can chart a new course, uh, or we can force them to. So, and big banks, I have to say, have wavered over and over. And just uh, last fall at the climate summit in Glasgow, they engaged in industrial scale greenwashing as they claimed the net zero climate targets would not preclude them from lending to oil companies for the next round of pipeline lines of fracking wells. So uh, now some may engage in blood washing, pretending that somehow they are helping the people those misery they've ensured by these years of backing Putin, but we can push hard at these lies. So uh, the only now matters for now, only actions that could be made now, for example, uh, seizing investments into Russia's fossil fuels or uh, just uh, stopping ending financial services for fossil fuel exploration in many parts of the world could make a huge sense for for uh, for helping ukraine to win over putin no it's a great point because no dictator can monopolize the sun and no autocrat can even stop the wind so since putin can't embargo the sun and he can't put up a wall blocking the wind these are some of the ways that we can all take action to then provide a new way forward for the entire world. And I know everyone is concerned with the rising price in fossil fuels, but the truth is the price of sunlight didn't change since the war started. And the sun will continue to deliver energy every day and even next year and the year after that, and we'll keep getting cheaper as we've seen the trend with solar. Maybe you could expand on that in some ways of why we actually see the answers are here today and how we can all be part of the solution and stand with Ukraine. Yeah, uh, of course. Uh, first of all, you you may uh, just write uh, this statement I will be sharing with you just in the chat. Uh, you may share and sign this imp very important statement which helped us to collect the global solidarity 
and states that the different tomorrow is feasible and tomorrow free from Putin and other petro dictators is feasible and tomorrow free from climate hostile and war feeding fossil fuels is as, as well uh, just as feasible and vital and urgent step towards that future is the unequivocal support for the Ukrainian people, which should also include a commitment for a green recovery of Ukraine from the war ashes. And uh, uh, you can help us deliver this earned support by also purposefully tackling Putin's war budget and by taking bold steps towards the radical decarbonization of our societies. Ukraine and Ukrainians are entitled to expect this support. And our joint and brighter future demands nothing less. It's true on Earth Day, we can realize that we give way too much power to those who produce oil. So we can respond collectively together here in Hawaii, in the US and around the world. Together, we can end this era of blood oil and create clean energy with non-proliferation as you have shared with us today. We can all dec decide not one more drop of blood oil is welcome here. And we must break that cycle of the private fossil fuel companies who have exploited war for profit in Ukraine, but all around the world. Yeah, that's absolutely true. And uh, uh, we uh, need to shift uh, our, our forces and the government leadership, which is needed to move to clean energy and low carbon technologies at the pace and scale required. And the tragic events in my country, the war, only serve to underline the need to accelerate the transition to a low carbon economy. And just a few countries are willing to go uh, it alone on a planned phase out of oil, gas, and coal, highlighting the imperative of increased international cooperation. And unfortunately, the Paris Agreement has no mechanism to facilitate a wind down of fossil fuels and accelerate a fair energy transition where wealthy and fossil fuel producing countries led and support others to be part of the shift. That's why a fossil fuel non-proliferation treaty is called for with negotiated terms for a phase out of the problem, oil, gas, and coal, and a fast tracking of clean energy and associated solutions. It's true, and as the bombs keep falling, as we're talking about two months, it's truly atrocious. It's beyond heartbreaking. But as the violence unfolds, our movement is unifying more and more every day. And I can see people saying no more, no more war, no more bloodshed, no more blank checks written to dictators and militaries to fund their war machines. So as long as we continue to pour petrodollars into the pockets of evil men such as Putin, we will not see an end to that violence. And that's why we must continue to organize. One of the other points you raised was small steps. So one of the examples was looking at turning down thermostats by one degrees in colder months, which we don't have to worry about here, but we could not turn on our air conditioners. And it also shows all the connections. You, of course, were also one of the most supportive nations growing so much wheat for the world. And now we can see that your country is responsible for 12% of the global wheat exports, 60% of global corn exports, and even 46% of global sunflower oil production. We have a sunflower field on Maui that's been getting phone calls to try to make up for that. And then the sad part is how this then is impacting people all around the world with higher costs and global food shortages, which will create even more conflicts. Yeah, that's true. And the latest UN report has already stated that uh, the war in Ukraine has already affected 1.7 billion people in 107 countries who are now faced with rising prices for food and energy. And uh, yeah, and faced with a strong resistance from the Ukrainian armed forces and suffering heavy losses, Russian invaders are increasingly resorting to terrorist tactics and committing war crimes. So the, the these uh, war is still ongoing, and uh, uh, more pressure needed on Russia to st to end the war in Ukraine and uh, restore the global food security as well as one of the directions that you've pointed out. It's true, we must stop it because too many innocent lives are lost. And if you look at Bucha and many of the other places, there are gross human rights as well as humanitarian law violations. But as we're talking about here on Earth Day today, the ripple effect of the Ukraine crisis on global grocery bills, however, it's just a taste of what is to come as climate change disrupts the world's agriculture areas. And humanitarian aid will also be impacted as well. And one book that's just come out is called 
a silent victim, how nature is really the first casualty of war. We stand with you in solidarity as we know, of course, the impact of the invasion on Ukraine and the impact then on nature as we see what has happened in previous armed conflicts around the world. Oh, yes, and uh, thank you for this global solidarity, but the scale of environmental crimes committed uh, through the territory of Ukraine is being devastating. And I will just name a few, there are fires on the oil oil, uh, oil, and uh, po oil uh, power plants and uh, oil refi uh, refining uh, power plants. And uh, there are a lot of uh, toxic substances released into and leaked into the ground and waters. And of course, these bombs and missiles uh, who are killing people and destroying infrastructure, they are also producing greenhouse gas emissions that increase like the CO2 emissions over the territory. Just many, uh, yeah, that's environmental catastrophe along with a human catastrophe. But, uh, but I truly believe that uh, all, uh, all these crimes will be punished in appropriate manner and they will be all reimbursed in full and even more to restore the environment of Ukraine and to just uh, yeah to to make a full restoration of what was damaged. But of course, I feel incredibly sorry for that because it, we better protect our environment and the planet than destroy and then rebuild again. So that's that's a uh, very very upsetting and devastating impact that the war is having on environment and on the planet as well. It's true, the conflict has inflicted nightmarish casualties on the Ukrainian people. We see too many images and we must all stand together to stop it. But what you're alluding to and what is also true is its impacts reach farther to scarring the biodiversity of the planet itself, which we all require. And I know that will be one of the points that you said you would raise at the Stockholm 50 conference. Yes, we definitely will do that uh, during Stockholm plus 50. We do hope in many ways that your vibrant wetlands and forests, as well as the Virgin Step will be able to recuperate. And we hope also that we send our aloha to you as well, as we know the conflict has been brutal beyond belief. And even the images that we've seen do not even come close to capture the pain the Ukrainian people are feeling. We thank you also for taking time in your busy life to come and speak with us here and we send you a message of Malama Honua, that's to take care of one another and also to take care of our earth. Thank you for joining us here on Earth Day. Thank you so much for inviting me and thank you for your solidarity. And uh, I hope that those uh, people who will see it will express solidarity with Ukrainians as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. Aloha, Svetlana. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.